Hey guys, uh, Mr. Barons here, bringing you another uh, calculus video. And this one on a very uh, major topic in Calculus 1, or first year calculus, the definition of continuity. And uh, my students are currently getting ready to write a big calculus exam, I'm trying to get credit for um, first year calculus, or first, I guess the first calculus course, Calculus 1. Um, at university, so they're writing a big exam in a week's time, so I decided to make this video for them, so hopefully you can get some use out of it. Um, so the formal definition of continuity, basically if you're trying to determine whether a function is continuous at a given point, you have to, de you have to go through using the definition of continuity. So basically it states, a function f is continuous at a point, x equals a, when three of the following things are true. So f of a is defined, so when you put a into the function, that's a is a number, you know, you get back something that actually exists, it's defined at that particular point. Um, number two, the limit as x goes to a, so if a is 2 as x goes to 2, at, of f of x exists. So chances are, that means you have to take the one side of limits for uh, most, at least one time during most questions. And the last thing is that number 1 and number 2 are equal. So f of a, so whatever you get for that value and whatever you get for the limit as x goes to a have to be equal. Um, if any of these conditions uh, fail, the function is discontinuous. So if we go through 1 and 1 uh, doesn't work, then that's where we stop. If a, f of a is not defined, boom, we can stop right there. All right, so let's have a look at a uh, couple of graph examples and sort of see, try to get a visual idea of what's happening. So if you look at um, this first graph that I have here, um, on the interval from A to B, and here uh, it's not F of A, it's F of C. Um, so at this point F of C, there's a, like a little hole in the graph, so it might be a point of discontinuity. Um, and you can see there's nowhere uh, at C where this this is defined. There's no dot or anything up here, like sometimes you might see that, like in number three, there's a dot down here. Um, it's just an empty hole in the graph. So at that particular point, f of c if not, is not defined, so if you had the function and you went to put c in it, it would be undefined or um, whatever have you. So in that case, that would violate the first rule of the definition of continuity. So if you look at this guy, um, if you look at the limit the one side of limit, so from the left side, so as it approaches C from the left side, right here, it equals, you know, some number up here, which is higher than if it approached from the right side. So basically it's, you know, the one sided limits are not equal. So therefore, the limit as X approaches C does not exist. So that's one of the um, areas that you might have trouble with in regards to this stuff, so be really, really careful. Um, you, sometimes you have to check the one sided limits. And I'll explain sort of when in my example. Um, and the last rule is that if you look at the one side of limit, so as it approaches the ref from the left side and then from the right side, it approaches the same point, this empty circle here. But unfortunately, F of C is defined all the way down here. So even though my one side of limits are equal, the limit exists, it doesn't equal F of C. So whatever that initial point is right there. So, you know, it passes rule number one, it passes rule number two but it fails rule number three. So that's sort of visually uh, what's happening. There are other scenarios that it might fit into, but that's generally what the examples that you'll see. So um, this is a question that I gave on one of my calculus exams. Um, and it's, you know, it's a particularly uh, decent example. It's not particularly hard, but it's, it's, it sort of covers everything um, from the definition of continuity. So um, the first thing we need to realize is, I'm asking a question here, um, at which points is f of x discontinuous? So uh, it depends on how your teacher asks the question. It might give you the points to check. They might say, where is f of x discontinuous, which is what we're going to answer. So when that's the case, you have to figure out what points to check. So the first point you, point you generally check when you have a piecewise function is this point out here, so x is equal to zero. So whatever intervals you have, we're gonna check those points. Actually, I'll erase that in just one second now. Um, we're gonna check. x is equal to zero. 
So there are some other points that we need to consider. So any place where f of x might be undefined. So if I look at this guy, generally what I want to look for is the denominator equal to zero. So there's a possibility here that we would have zero in the denominator. So we might check this, x is equal to negative two. So I'll put that there and check negative two. And if I look at this guy, there's also a possibility here of x is equal to negative three. So I'll put it here for now, but this is a little bit of a tricky one. So I'm going to put it there, then I'll talk about it a little bit later. You might see what I'm talking about, but if not, then uh, just keep watching and we'll go through. So let's do x is equal to zero first. So let's check that point. So x is equal to zero. So I like to write the number of the rule out here. So um, I'm going to check f of that point, so f of zero. So this is the first rule. Is it defined? Well, let's see. So I got to figure out what interval is it in. Is it in this one or is it in this one? Well, this one has the equal to part, so less than or equal to. So it's gonna. I'm gonna check this guy. So it's uh, zero squared minus four divided by zero plus two. That's messy, isn't it? plus 2. So that's a negative 4 divided by 2. So I got negative 2. So there's my f of 0. Had to pause for a second there, guys. Sorry about that. All right, so um, I found that, you know, number 1, the number 1 rule of my definition of continuity is true. So f of 0 is equal to negative 2, therefore it exists. So now what I need to do Anytime you're checking the interval, so like um, basically the boundary, I'll call it, of the piecewise function, you have to check the one-sided limits. So I need to check um, the limit as x approaches 2 from the left side. And in order to do that, I'm going to use, um, or sorry, 0, not 2. Um, this guy, so I'm going to change that before we get too confused here, hey, approaches 0, so I'm going to use this part. The reason why I'm going to use this guy for as approaches from the left side, well, this is for x less than 0, so that will be the left side of 0, so that guy is x squared minus 4 divided by x plus 2. And then, of course, we know what that equals because it's just this guy equals negative 2. So now we need to get the limit as x approaches 0 from the right side. So the right side, I have to use this guy because this is x greater than 0, so that's positive, so that's from the right. Negative 6 over x plus 3. So I'm going to put 0 right here. So that leaves me with negative 6 over 0 plus 3. And that gives me negative 6 divided by 3 is negative 2. So if you look at this, my one-sided limits are the same. So that's a good thing. So that means a limit as x approaches 0. So we don't have from the left side or the right side now because the one-sided limits are equal. We can say the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x. We don't have to write the full piecewise function, just to write f of x out. And that's equal to negative 2. We have to look at the third part of the definition. So the per third part is, are 1 and 2 equal? Well, yes, they are, right? So f of 0 is negative 2. And the limit as x goes to 0 of f of x is negative 2. So we can say f of 0 is equal to the limit as x goes to 0 of f of x is equal to negative 2. Therefore, um, f of x is continuous at x equals 0. So we just proved that that guy was continuous at x equals 0. So if it wasn't continuous, one of these things wouldn't have failed. And chances are, 
when you're checking the boundary point or the interval on these on the you know the right side of the piecewise function the one side of limits are not going to be the same if it's discontinuous so that's what you're looking for and then you would get to this point and say if, since the one side of limits are not continuous the function the limit as f of x goes to zero does not exist therefore it's discontinuous so that's the first point checked so it's continuous there let's have a look at x is equal to negative two so x is equal to negative two is in this interval right here so we will we will refer to this guy as our um, part of f of x we don't need to think about this guy at all because x equal to negative two only is in this guy so the first thing we can think about is um, we can rewrite it sort of like this and what we notice is that this guy can reduce a little bit so this is difference of squares so it's um, x minus 2 x plus 2 and divide both sides divide by x plus 2 so if you notice this cancels and this cancels so I'm left with x minus 2 so what this means, this cancellation right here, this means we have a point of discontinuity, as my students call it, a pod. We have a pod. So that means that if you look back at the number one uh, graph that we have, so this guy right here, whoops, my apologies. If we look at this guy, this guy is a pod, a point of discontinuity there's a hole in the graph at that particular guy so this is what happens when you get a pod you get some type of cancellation of a binomial or something like that so this we canceled x plus 2 so therefore there's a pod so what does that mean for our definition so let me just erase what I have done here so I give myself a bit of space um, so if I look at my function what a lot of students are going to do they're going to go you know f of negative 2 and they probably got this cancelized part right here but one thing I always tell my students and I always get them to do anytime you cancel you immediately write x cannot equal whatever that binomial or whatever you canceled um, you have to make sure you write you know what value of x made that zero so if you look at x plus two well negative two so this guy cannot equal negative two because you know this guy right here cannot equal negative two so um, you have to be really careful with that. So sometimes my students do this. They'll take this, uh, they won't cancel the original function and they'll put negative 2 in there. So we'll do this negative 2 squared minus 4 over plus 2. And they'll get um, 0 over 0, which kind of tells you when you get 0 over 0, that kind of tells you that it's indeterminate. It's, um, a pod because that's indeterminate form right so um, you know it's a little tricky sometimes I'm sure there's an example out there where this doesn't happen but most often than not when you get 0 over 0 that tells you that it's a point of discontinuity I made a mistake there just messing up the negatives for me this this thing does so that's 0 over 0 but what I like to do um, my students will often do this, but what I like to do is I like to do this. I like to show this cancellation and then put in this x cannot equal 2. And then when I do my first part, I'll say f of negative 2 is undefined. And we can say undefined. And we can say um, x equals negative 2 is a point of discontinuity. Pen tab was being a real pain tonight, guys. Sorry about that. Um, f of negative 2 is undefined. x equals negative 2 is a point of discontinuity. So what that means is it's a... So you might get asked this question, is it removable or non-removable? So this is a removable discontinuity, and that's the only one. The only time you'll have a removable discontinuity in these type of questions is when you have some type of cancellation like this with your function. That is the only time. Every other time, it'll be a vertical asymptote for the most part, or like in the, um, like the possibility of a jump discontinuity at the interval, so whatever this number is here in your question. So, 
Hopefully I didn't make that too confusing. But anyway, just look for a cancellation, and then you can look for a pod and removable discontinuity. So the last number we got to check is negative 3. And the reason why I'm not going to do any workings for this one is because if you look at x equals negative 3, the number comes from this particular part of the function. But if you look at the interval, this is only for x is greater than 0. So this guy will never be negative 3. This guy can only have x is equal to 0, or sorry, 1, 2, 3, or anything greater than 0, so it'll be point 0.1, so on and so forth. Um, but it will never be negative 3. x will never be negative 3. So, therefore, you do not have to check x equals negative 3. But, now if this interval changed, you would definitely have to check. So be really careful about that. You want to make sure um, that the number you're checking is in the interval. So that's a really tricky part. And a lot of my students will often make the mistake of checking those points and, and classifying them as points of discontinuity. The reason being is because they'll take this negative 3 and then they'll do the one-sided limits. But remember, you only have to do the one-sided limits for, um, you know, when, you, when you're checking the boundary point. So what I would call, what I would say to you, if I was checking this negative three, you should al even if you didn't realize that it wasn't in your inter interval, you would have, you could still, you would still should work out for you for the most part, right? Because when you look at x equals negative three, well, you look at this. Okay, negative three is here. If I plug it in, I'm going to get something. Then when I go to take the limit of it, I should get exactly the same thing because all I'm doing is plugging it in, and then one and two are equal, so therefore it's continuous. So be really careful. So guys, hopefully this makes sense and um, gives you a decent idea of how to use definition continuity. What I can say to you, like I always say to my students, you have to practice this until you master it. So uh, there's really no excuse because I can guarantee you on your calculus exams, you're going to have one. So best of luck, guys. Hopefully this makes sense. I'll see you guys.